Morning. Do you know how much Santa Claus paid for his flight? Eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong. Bad wrong here. I've got it on. <laughs> Way too loud. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? Oh, it's a fireworks show. Let's try Krispies, we're all ready. <laughs> <laughs> Big snap cracker and pop. <laughs> well, let's try something else. Uh, that was Brother Wayne's joke. <laughs> but I liked it. <laughs> he told me another one too. He said the priest went back to law school and got a law degree. You know what they call it? Father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> we give my voice this morning is uh, gravelly and breaking up all the time. I don't know what's going on, but anyway, uh, I got one other little humorous thing I want to uh, show us this morning. I understand that Ray got a Christmas gift. What'd you get, right? May I? Yes. Oh. A precious couple right there, and I don't know their names, <laughs> brought me a whole bag of nuts. <laughs> 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 this little boy right here, he's going to preach a little bit, and the nuggets are going to flow. <laughs> if you don't get anything out of it, and I don't hear nuggets, Please come to see me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're going to try something different. Can you hear me? I'll get it. I'll turn back on. Okay. It's on. Is it on now? All right, here we go. First of all, it's good to see everyone here this morning. Thank you so much for coming. I trust that you'll get a blessing from the precious word of God. Uh, get down to uh, seriousness now. Yes. Uh, since we've got all the, the lamps out of the way. There it went. Yeah. Glory. You know, it's amazing because Mike and I didn't talk this week about the song service, but the songs that he sang this morning, uh, that we sang together, uh, are really about what I want to preach on. I want to preach on the heavenly priest. And uh, I'll tie it in as we go. But, you know, we have a heavenly priest sitting on the right hand of God, ever making intercessions for us. Now, we hear a lot in the Bible about the priest and the high priest, but the, I saw something this week in studying this message that I've never seen before. I, Ray, I pulled out two or three nuggets that I, that I think uh, we're gonna really like and enjoy this morning on this service. But his work as a priest <clears throat> was in behalf of his people. And our first attention, as we find the priest mentioned, was not under the law, but was way before the law. Yeah. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. I want to read verses 11 and 12. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. 
And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. Now, if you were to read this whole chapter, you'll find that Lot was living in Sodom, mm -hmm. and four kings came and captured Sodom and Gomorrah and took them, their families, and all their goods with them. Okay? And then we see that this priest comes up on the scene and says his name was Melchizedek. And Abram, when he finds out that <clears throat> Lot has been captured and his family's been captured and all of his goods have been captured, he trains 318 of his servants born in his house arms them, takes off after the captors, overruns them, captures them, brings everything back to the land. That's the scene that we see when we pick up here. Now, when Abram comes back to the land, the Bible says that the king of Sodom came out to meet him. And he said to him, you take the spoils and just give me the people. And Abram on any other time probably would have been tempted to do that because he was very materialistically inclined. But what, what happens? Go with me down to verse 17. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of the and the kings that were with him and at the valley of Sheba, which is the king's dale, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the Most High God, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Now, I'm going to come back to verse 18 later on in the scripture and tied in with what I'm trying to preach this morning. So Abram is there and he meets Melchizedek who says he was a priest of the most high God. Now I've read everything I can read. I've listened to everything I can listen to on who Melchizedek was or is. Let me just simply say this. No one knows who Melchizedek was. People say he was Shem because he was alive at that time period. Some people say that it was the Lord Jesus, but the Bible says he was like unto the Son of God. Yes. The Bible says he had no mother and no father, no beginning and no ending. Well, Jesus had a mother. Oh, yes. So he wasn't Jesus. So who he was, I don't know. But I know one thing. The question is not who was Melchizedek. The question is, who is he a type of? Who is he representing? So we learned that he was a priest of the Most High God, and we knew that Abram knew that he came from God, otherwise he would have never paid tithes to him. Right. Now you got to understand, this is before the law. There was no ordinance to pay tithes. You'll find in the Old Testament that Abraham and Jacob both paid tithes before the law. Whoa. It even gets better than that. <laughs> Go with me now to Psalms chapter 110. This is the second mention of Melchizedek found in our Bibles. And by the way, it's spelled sometimes C-H-I-S, sometimes C-H-I-Z, Melchizedek. Psalm 110, verse 1. 
the Lord, this is David speaking, he says, the Lord, God the Father, sent unto my David, my Lord, God the Son, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. And by the way, how did he swear? He swore by himself, which there is no greater. Can't lie. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. David was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. The Lord said unto my Lord, God the Father said unto God the Son, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, go with me to Hebrews. Hebrews, and you'll find him actually mentioned in 5, 6, and 7, but the bulk of it is in chapter 7. And I know this is going to be a little lengthy in reading, but I have to get to it. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, which meant king of righteousness, king of peace, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. He gave him a tithe. First being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Made like unto the Son of God. Amen. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Where do we get a tenth for time? And verily they that are the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Now to help you understand that, it says that the tribe of Levi was the priestly tribe. Now, they ain't even born yet. <laughs> but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham mm -hmm. and blessed him that had the promises. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Amen. And here men that are received here and here men that die receive tithes. What's he saying? Priests die. Aaron die. Levi die. They all die. Yeah. Men that receive tithes die. But there he receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. Amen. Our high priest liveth continually. Yes. Liveth yes. forever. <laughs> yes. At the right hand of God. Yes. Ever making intercessions for us. Yes. That's good. I see. What's this? And as I may say so, Levi also who received tithes paid tithes in Abraham. For he was not yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. You see that? Yes. Levi, the priest, paid tithes to Melchizedek even though 
He wasn't even born. <laughs> he gave ties through Abraham. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under the for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Why were we to have another priest that wasn't a priest of Aaron from the Levitical tribe? Because it is a better thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. For he, the priesthood being changed, mm -hmm. it changed from the law to grace. It was coming. There is made of necessity a change also of the law. Christ didn't come to condemn the law. He came to fulfill the law. Yes. Made a little lower than the angels. He died that we could have a high priest sitting at the right hand of the Father. That's great. Ever, mm -hmm. ever making intercession for yeah. us. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe. He didn't come from Levi. Mm -hmm. He came from Judah. <laughs> of which no man gave attention at the altar. There was no priest come from the tribe of Judah. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest. Amen. Melchizedek was simply a type. It sure was. He was a picture yeah. of our high priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandment but after the power of an endless life. Yeah. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah. He is eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. I keep saying it every message. Yeah. He is eternal life. Yes, he is. You don't have eternal <coughs> life outside of Jesus Christ. <coughs> yes. It is he. <coughs> True. Who is made not after the law of car carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifies, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He testified, my Lord Jesus is a high priest sitting on the right hand of God forever after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Mm -hmm. I tell you, uh, this message kind of got to my heart. God knew Abram's weaknesses. He knew all about him. And we see here in, in, in Hebrews that he's talking about a, a righteous God. He, he's talking about doing the right thing. Okay? So, so why is he introduced at all? Why is Melchizedek even introduced? Yeah. In Hebrews, it's mentioned to assure us that we can have victory and avoid failure because we have a high priest who lives to ever make intercessions yeah. for us. Yeah. That we can gain the victory yeah. through him. Amen. Yes. But in Genesis, Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 14. In Genesis, Abram would have ruined his testimony if he had taken the spoils that he got from the victor. But for once in his life, he did not do that. You see, Abraham gained a greater victory than he did over the four kings that day. That's good preaching. Abraham gained the victory over Abraham. He sure did. 
He gained the victory over himself. God knew his weaknesses. He knew he would greatly profit himself, to help himself. But God sent the priest of the Most High God to bring him back to earth. He sends Melchizedek to remind Abram that he does not need the, the patronage of the world. He doesn't need the things that the king of Solomon, Sodom had to offer. Think for a second. Can you imagine if Abram would have taken all of the spoils? What do you think he would have been? He would have been living in Sodom. Right there with his nephew Lot. It would have changed the whole world. Melchizedek is reminding God's teaching him through Melchizedek that he doesn't need the things of the world. He's got a high priest. He's got a priest that's there looking after him. He doesn't have to do questionable deals. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you're in the business world, there are opportunities upon opportunities upon opportunities to make a lot of money but it's a little borderline illegal. Mm -hmm. It's a little borderline immoral. <coughs> it's a little borderline wrong. That decision is for you to make. Some people make the wrong. Some people give up their own innocent and moral feelings for the chance to make money. Yeah for the chance to be rich. God is saying through Melchizedek, Abram, you don't need the things of Sodom. You are provided with a God that controls heaven and earth. He could have even said, Abram, you are provided with a God and a priest that owns the cattle of a thousand hills. You don't need that. Listen as Melchizedek says to him in verse 19. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram in the most high, of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Abram, you don't need these worldly trinkets that Sodom, the king of Sodom, can offer you. You have a priest. You have the possessor of heaven and earth. Then Melchizedek reminds him that he didn't win the battle. And blessed be the most high God which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Yeah. He said, Abraham, this wasn't your victory. God gave it to you. Amen. God won this battle. Mm -hmm. Gave it to you. 318 <laughs> men defeated thousands. Yeah. <clears throat> Just as Jesus reminds us that we can't work our way into heaven. Jesus won the battle at Calvary. Yes. He paid the price. He took the precious blood and poured it on the mercy seat Amen. that covered our sins and gave us eternal life through him. Yes. Look at verse 22 and 23. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take a thread even to a shoelace. He said, don't even give me a shoestring. Yeah. I want nothing. Yeah. And that I will not take anything that is thine, <clears throat> lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Oh. Abram wanted all the glory to go to God. Yeah. We should want all the glory to go to the Lord Jesus Christ yes. who gave us everything. Yes. Amen. 
Now, Abraham had conquered himself and surrendered to God, and now comes the reward. Look at verse 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. That's right. Amen. Listen, we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Our high priest who sits on the right hand of God, he is our exceeding great reward. Yes. Yeah. He did it all. Yes. Just for us. We do not need, listen, and listen to me good. We do not need the friendship of unbelievers. We have the love of a believer. We have the love of God the Father, God the Son, who became our great high priest and sent God the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us, why do we have to yeah. surrender and be friends with unbelievers? Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a matter of some already have. We are to be together in a bond with Christians. That's who are we are to associate with with Christians. Are we to witness unbelievers? Yes, we are. But we are not to be a part of them. And they are not to be a part of us. Now I want to close with something that I said earlier that I would get back to. Verse 18. We read it one more time. Blew my mind. Never seen it. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth Bread and wine. I told you that the Levites, Levi gave tithes to Melchizedek through Abraham. Watch this. Abraham and Melchizedek took part of the Lord's Supper before it ever happened. <laughs> what did he bring? Bread and wine. Bread and wine. <laughs> they partook of the Lord's Supper thousands of years before it happened. But when the great high priest came, what did he say? This do in remembrance of me until I come again. We partake of the Lord's Supper, bread and wine, in remembrance of of what he did for us. Amen. Is that not That's unbelievable? That's amazing. <laughs> Thousands of years before it was instituted, Abram and the priest of the Most High God celebrated the Lord's Supper. <laughs> Listen, the question today is not who was Melchizedek? The question is who did he typify? Yeah. Who did he represent? Yep. He was a representative. He was right unto the Son of God. Yeah. <laughs> he was a representative of our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Might come and get a song. Listen as I quote to Hebrews chapter 13. I'll close with these verses. <clears throat> Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Listen, we may not have everything we want in this life. Just like Abram didn't. But Abram was content with what he had. Listen, I'm content with what I've got. And I'm not speaking materialistically, although I am content with that. I'm speaking spiritually. I'm content that I've got the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior who died to give me eternal life and went to God the Father and sat on his right hand and said, okay, Lord, I'm ready to do what you need me to do. I want to take make intercession for Mike, 
Kim, Ray, Wendell, Steve, Jenny, everybody here that knows Christ as our Savior, we have a great high priest that's fighting for us. Amen. He is our advocate. Thank you. He said, God, He can't touch them. They're under the blood. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my heifer, and I will not fear what men shall do unto me. I hope and pray that I never have to go through what some Christians have had to go through in this life. But I will not fear what men shall do unto me. Because I have a great high priest ever making intercessions for me. Let's all stand. Good. I hear the Savior say Thy strength and need is small Child of weakness watch and pray Find in me thy all in all Jesus reign it all blesses you. We we had Linda's family down this weekend for our Christmas and we had nine of them that couldn't come because of sickness. Uh, but it's, it's rampant. Be careful. Wash your hands. Uh, stay out of people's faces if you can because the flu and everything else is going around. It's easy to get it. Uh, I've got an appointment at 2.15 tomorrow to see what's going on in my throat. And, uh, but it's uh, I'll feel fine, uh, other than I've got one little issue, but I, I can handle that. Uh, don't forget tonight, the Hall's Magical Singles will be here at 6 o'clock, and they'll bless your heart. Invite somebody to come with you, we'll have a good crowd, and they, they really are good. I, I think you'll enjoy and get a blessing from them. The next Sunday, on the 11th, uh, we'll have... Practice at Fowler Park, is that right, Mike? And it's it's all Christmas carols. It's all Christmas carols, and I want everybody to be involved. So if you can, please come. I'm gonna, go ahead, Mike, say something on that. Well, I just want, uh, want everybody.